Right, so the second video is going to show you a method for finding the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a general square matrix. So the way it works is, first of all, I tell you how you find the eigenvalues of that matrix, and then next you find the eigenvectors. So it goes in two steps. So first of all, I explain how do you find eigenvalues. So the defining equation for eigenvectors and eigenvalues was that the matrix A times the eigenvector V should be equal to lambda times the eigenvector V, where this lambda is the eigenvalue. Right? Now we can rearrange this equation a bit. I can write this as A times V is lambda times I times V, where I is the identity matrix, which does nothing. Right? Then I can take this over the other side, and then I get A minus lambda I times V should be equal to 0. Now, if whatever this is, this is some matrix, right? If this matrix is invertible, so in other words, if the inverse matrix exists, then I can multiply both sides by the inverse matrix, and we get that A minus lambda I minus 1, A minus lambda I V, equals a minus lambda i minus 1, 0. Okay. But here the inverse and the matrix cancel, so you get that v is equal to a minus lambda i minus 1, by to 0. But any mu matrix multiplied by the 0 vector is equal to 0. Okay. But this means that v is not an eigenvector. Because one of our conditions on eigenvector eigenvectors is that they should not be zero, right? We want a non-zero V which satisfies this equation. So the only way we can get a non-zero Z, a non-zero V, is if this condition fails, right? The only way that we can find a non-zero V satisfying this equation is if the inverse does not exist. If the inverse exists, then the solution must be zero. Okay. So therefore, For the eigenvector v, we need the fact that a minus lambda i minus 1 does not exist, because okay, otherwise you get 0. But when does the inverse not exist? We showed last week that you can always find the inverse as long as the determinant is not 0. So the only time the inverse does not exist is if the determinant is zero. Okay. So in order to have an eigenvector, this equation must be true. The determinant of a minus lambda times i must be equal to zero. So this is a very important equation in the theory of eigenvectors and eigenvalues. Because what does it tell you? It tells you that Well, first of all, for an n by n matrix, A, this gives you a polynomial equation in lambda. So this is a polynomial of degree n in lambda. Okay, so it's like lambda to the power n plus something times lambda to the n minus 1 plus all the way down to 0. Okay, So we have to solve a polynomial equation, in other words. Okay? And this equation is called the characteristic polynomial. Okay. And what's useful about it is if you solve this equation, then you know that lambda must be an eigenvalue. Okay? So we can use this equation to find the eigenvalues. Okay. So that's how you find the eigenvalues. So I'm going to do an example of this because I think this may have been a bit abstract. So we'll work on the same example we saw in the first video, which was this. 
4 minus 1, 6 minus 3. Okay, so first of all, we need to find what is a minus lambda i. So a minus lambda i is equal to a, that's this, minus lambda times i is this, which is 4 minus lambda minus 1, 6 minus 3 minus lambda. Okay, so that's a 2 by 2 matrix. And according to this equation, we must have the determinant of that matrix is 0. The determinant of a minus lambda i is the determinant of this. That's 4 minus lambda minus 3 minus lambda minus minus 1 times 6, which is lambda squared minus lambda minus or minus 12 plus 6 minus 6. Okay, and in order for the eigenvalue eigenvector to exist, this must be equal to zero. Okay, so this thing here is the characteristic polynomial that I talked about. Okay. That's the characteristic polynomial, and you see a two by two matrix, you get a degree two polynomial, which is a quadratic equation. Okay, so two by two matrices are not too difficult because quadratic equations you can solve. Okay, and in this case, it factorizes quite nicely. This is lambda minus 3 times lambda plus 2 equals 0. So there are only two solutions. Lambda 1 is 3, or lambda 2 is minus 2. So the only possible eigenvalues this matrix can have are 3 or minus 2. So that tells you how to find the eigenvalues. Next, we have to see how do you find the eigenvectors. Okay. And the equation that we derived for the eigenvectors was that a minus lambda i times the eigenvector v should be equal to zero. And here, from the previous sheet, a minus lambda i was the matrix 4 minus lambda minus 1, 6 minus 3 minus lambda. Okay. So we need to solve this equation for each of the possible eigenvalues that we found. So the first one is that lambda 1 was 3. Okay. So if you put lambda equals 3 into this equation, then you get a minus lambda i is 1 minus 1, 6 minus 6. Okay, so then a minus lambda i times v equals 0. So if we say that v is equal to x, y, then this means that 1 minus 1, 6 minus 6 times x, y is equal to 0, 0, which means, so you get two equations, x minus y is 0, 6x minus 6y is 0. And you'll notice, hopefully, that these two equations are the same. That's not a coincidence. If it's a real eigenvalue, then these two equations will all always be the same, up to a multiple of a constant. Okay, so the solution you need here is obviously that x equals y. That satisfies both these equations. So now you can choose x to be whatever you want, so I'm going to choose x equals 1, so that means that the vector v1 is xy, x equals y, so you get 1, 1. Okay, so that means that v1 equals 1, 1 is the eigenvector of a with the eigenvalue lambda 1, which is 3. Okay, And this is true, because this is exactly what we saw in the first video, right? If you multiply this vector by a, you get 3 times this vector. So that's good, it shows you the method works. So quickly, we'll just do it for the second eigenvalue. That's lambda 2, which was minus 2. So again, I'll do it a bit quicker this time. a minus lambda i times v equals 0. Let's call this one v2. So if I put lambda equals minus 2 here, I get 6 
minus 1, 6 minus 1 times xy equals 0, 0. Here again, the two equations are the same. So this means that 6x minus y is 0, y is 6x. And again, I'm free to choose what x or y is. So again, I'll take x equals 1. And then you get that v2, x is 1, y is 6x. So therefore, v2 is the eigenvector of A with eigenvalue lambda 2, which is minus 2. OK, and again, this agrees with what we saw in the previous video. So this shows you the general method for calculating eigenvectors and eigenvalues. It works on any size of matrix. The only difference is in for larger matrices, you have a more difficult determinant to calculate more equations to solve here. So in the next video, I'm just going to give some more examples of this for different kinds of matrix.